My name is Dennis Cahill and I'm a bricklayer. I'm lucky enough to say that I'm 75 years old. I've been very fortunate. I became a union bricklayer because my father was a union bricklayer. My grandfather was a union bricklayer. My great-grandfather was a bricklayer and supposedly my great-grandfather before that. We've been bricklayers since we came to Canada in 1820. That's all the family knows is bricklaying, and obviously we love it or we would have left it a long time ago. I have to say my eldest son is a bricklayer, and he's as proud of being a union bricklayer as I am. I went to work in the smelters there, and there's where I was first introduced to uh, really pollution on the work site. It, it was pretty severe. Uh, we didn't have the best masks in the world, and therefore some of us, in fact it was four of us that were uh, brothers that worked together, uh, two are dead now, one is, uh, has emphysema, and I guess I'm the fortunate one, I have silicosis. In the 60s we used numerous materials in uh, uh, especially refractory that's been around for generations. But when we used the materials, the manufacturers gave us no input on what the risks may or may not be. So we just kind of winged it. And uh, that's part of why so many of us are hurt now. We didn't know when we should wear a mask or if we should wear a mask. The suppliers and the contractors, for the most part, poo-pooed it. It's just ridiculous talk by organized labor. I had OSHA training. But OSHA was just barely coming into existence when I was a young bricklayer. They were more concerned with safety on the job in how to build scaffold. Their concern about dust control was minimal, if it existed at all. I started noti noticing issues with my breathing when I was about 45, maybe 50. But the bronchitis and the weakness and the f frequent um, cases of pneumonia were all brought on by the fact that I had weak lungs. I did receive some compensation for the health problems that I have to deal with now. About 20 years ago, when I was 55, I received a check for $750, give or take some change. And I assumed at the time that that would be the first of many checks to compensate me for my health problems. In 2009, I received another compensation check. I received a check for five dollars. Instead of cashing it, I framed it. I think I'm worth more than that and all of the other people that worked in the industry that have the same ailments and, and physical disabilities that I have deserve better treatment too. Now I'm in my favorite part of Arizona. It's central Arizona, just under the rim, called the Mungion Rim. It's beautiful up here, the air is crystal clear, but even though I live in a paradise, it's a downside for me in one regard. 5,000 foot, it's hard for me to catch my breath. Just like in the valley, it was hard for me to catch my breath because of the pollution. So it's almost, there's nowhere I can go where I don't suffer from some issues with the silicosis. Those of us that work in the construction industry aren't throwaways. We're not paper plates. We expect to be compensated for what we do. You know, even though my $5 check was compensation for my exposure to asbestos, I've now been diagnosed with silicosis. And I wonder just how many other construction workers are out there that are being compensated in the $5 range for their health issues that they now have to deal with. I have health issues that really make it hard for me to go out and be alive. And I shouldn't have to live this way. This is incredible. But unfortunately, I can't really take advantage of it like I used to. I wish I had just half the energy that these dogs that are uh, sharing this little walk with me have. I, I don't, and I never will have again. We gotta stop the walk now, I hate to say it, but uh, that uh, 50 yards I just walked was is probably 20 yards further than I can really do, and I still gotta make it 20 yards back up to the house. Well, thank you very much.